God never designed the people to be sick or to be as sick as they are today. And I think you'll agree with me, children are getting sicker and sicker. When we were kids, we ran around the hills and there was, you know, we might get a couple of colds a year, but uh, that's about the only sickness that I can remember. But there's a lot of sickness today. And there's a reason, because Newton's third law of motion states to every action, there is an equal and an opposite reaction. And this should be on the tip of our lips at every stage. What is the reason? Why are these things happening? Proverbs 26 verse 2 states that the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, no problem happens without a cause. There is always a reason. And if you're ever told, if you're not well, it's just you, it's just something that happens to you, you've got every right to say, that's very unscientific because there's always a cause. And so it's very important for us to put the detective hats on and find out why are these things so. Now, how do we do that? One way to do it, and it's an important way to do it, is to look at the history because we are a combination of everything that's ever happened in our life. Yes, our genes. Yes, the um, conditions that we were raised in, whether that be the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional. We're a combination of all that. So history is very important. And symptoms. Symptoms are the body saying, excuse me, can you do something? Something's happening here. I need you to listen to me. I need you to respond. And then you try different things and your body's response is your guide. Your body's response tells you, ah, this is a good thing to do. No, don't do that again. And recently having injured my hand, I listen. <laughs> and this hand tells me what I can do and what I cannot do. It's quite simple. I believe everyone should be their own doctor because only you know what you've been through. Only you know how your body responds or reacts to things and only my hand could tell me what hurt and what didn't hurt. So I listen. And this is something that many people have lost the art of doing. Listening. If your body speaks, please listen. And if you don't listen to the first whisper, the body will start screaming. And when it starts screaming, it's doing damage. So that's a very important part. Listening to your body is a key aspect of empowerment in your health journey. Many individuals overlook their body signals due to busy lifestyles. Being mindful and attuned to physical cues can reveal important patterns related to diet, stress and emotional well-being, helping to manage health more effectively. I'd like to have a look at the two main systems in the world today of, of healing. One is based on fear and one is based on faith. So let's have a look at the fear system. This fear system was based on the fact that we weren't created, we evolved. And because we evolved, we cannot heal. And because we cannot heal, then we need something to come into our bodies to heal it. Ah, and so what has been produced is drugs. But I think everyone will agree with me that the drug medication today is a deception. There is no doubt that in a crisis, a drug may save a life. There is no doubt about that. But drugs cannot heal you. They actually can never heal you. They might mask symptoms, they might actually bring some relief, but, but they do not heal you because there's only one thing that can heal, and that's the body. And when you're sick and your body's not working, you need faith, <laughs> because if you can see it, it's not faith. But I have faith that I live in a body that was created, and it was created to heal. It's an amazing process that whenever an injury happens to a body, immediately there are these incredible systems that are activated to start healing that body. 
We were created to heal. And when we're not well, maybe there has been an injury, not drugs, <laughs> herbs. God also created the herbs. And the herbs work with the human body. They work with the human body to bring about healing. This is the truth. And I don't think anyone doubts the fact that when you cut yourself, it will heal. It will heal if you give it the right conditions. And if there is a cut, there are certain conditions that it needs. It needs to be cleaned. If there's dirt in there, that needs to be washed out. That's a bit of common sense. And then it needs to be held together. Isn't that right? If there's a cut, it needs to be held together. It needs to be held together so that those cells can start to connect so that that cut can heal. So how do we, do we connect it together? Well, the old fashioned way was to pour pine pitch in. And you can still buy bottles of pine pitch. You pour pine pitch in and as that pitch dries, it actually pulls it all in. It's also got uh, antibacterial properties in it, makes quite a nice scab. Uh, stitch it, it can be stitched together, or sometimes just sticking plaster, butterfly clips it's called. So there are certain conditions that that cut needs to heal, and it'll heal if you give it the right conditions. We've looked at a three-letter word and a two-letter word. Now we're looking at the one-letter word, and that's I. I am the master of my destiny. I am the one that chooses what I do or what I do not to do to my body. And if I go to cut, I can choose. Will I put pine pitch in it? Will I go and have it stitched? Will I cook, put sticking plaster on it and of course that hurts very much and your body's response is the one that tells you this, this is a good way to go. God's government is a government of freedom and freedom was based or is based on free choice and God gave each human being the honour, the right, the ability to choose. To choose what we eat, to choose what we drink, when we eat, when we drink, how, how I deal with this broken hand. And so when I slipped on the rocks early December and my body went up and came slammed down on that wrist and the pain, whoa, <laughs> that was extreme. And the look of my wrist told me I, I needed a little bit more help. <laughs> and so I went to the hospital and I'm thankful for the orthopedic surgeon that was able to pull my, and the x-ray that showed that my bone was totally broken and out of alignment and the skill of the orthopedic surgeon and praise God for pain-killing medication <laughs> that was put into my arm that allowed him to pull that into place. And the next x-ray showed it was in place. I said to the surgeon, my husband's praying for you. We're praying for you. <laughs> and, I, and so that, that, that was enough. And of course, when I got home, then I started to put the comfrey poultices on because I know that comfrey is an amazing herb that has a growth stimulant in it and its nickname is Knit Bone. And here we are, we're eight weeks later and yes, the x-ray showed that that bone had healed very, very nicely. Something else though, and this is where I'm a little bit impatient, it takes time to heal. The six weeks that my hand was in plaster was about, was I think one of the longest six weeks of my life. Doesn't seem long now, but at the time, <laughs> at the time. Mind you, I took it out a little bit earlier. I kept it immobilised, but I certainly put those herbs on. Time, and that's something a lot of us uh, don't give the body time. My daughter, when she was about five, she said, Mum, I'm going to grow up in a minute. Now, we know she didn't grow up in a minute. Well, I wanted to heal in a minute, but <laughs> it doesn't heal in a minute. When the plaster first came off, I could hardly bend my fingers like that. And now I can bend them like that, but that didn't happen overnight. Now I'm still getting to my full, full wrist, <laughs> but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I, I have to be patient, something that I'm not very good at, but it takes time. Just as the ba a baby grows, just as a plant grows, so that's how we heal, little by little by little. Healing is a gradual process that requires time and patience. 
especially for chronic conditions, unraveling deep-seated issues takes consistent effort. Embracing the idea that healing is not linear fosters self-compassion and helps maintain a positive outlook essential for overall recovery. And we choose these two systems. And God said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, He says, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. You know what a sound mind does? It considers, it considers, there's no need to fear. I just need to do the right conditions and give it a little bit of time because I have faith that in another month I will be able to have a full fist. I have faith that in another month this thumb will be able to touch that little finger. Not quite yet. I just need to give it a bit more time. It's all right because two weeks ago it couldn't even touch my second finger. So there is progress. If you can see it, it's not faith. I have faith that this hand will will totally be, be healed. I don't fear because I have faith in an incredible body that was created to heal. They're the, they're the two systems and we choose because it's our God-given right to choose what we do to our body, what goes into our body and what doesn't go into our body. And the orthopedic surgeon he told me what he was going to do, and it was my choice whether I let him do that. <laughs> I wanted my bones in alignment. Interesting, when those bones were in alignment, I didn't have the pain anymore. You see, the, that severe pain when I sat by the beach holding my arm, that told me this, this is serious, this is serious. I've got, to, I've got to go and get a little bit of help for this to heal. Believing in the body's innate healing ability is vital for recovery. This foundational principle promotes a therapeutic environment, allowing individuals to engage fully in their healing journeys with optimism and trust in their body's natural processes. But today, in medicine, many people are told they're sick because of their genes. So what I'd like to look at is genes. I'd like to look at the role that genes play. I'd like to look at are genes the true cause of disease. And we're going to go where we'll go many times this week to what I call the CBD, the Central Business District of the Human Body, is the inside workings of the cell. So right inside the nucleus of the cell is the DNA, and the DNA is the genetic code that determines the colour of our eyes, the colour of our skin, the colour of our hair. Even though I've just hit 70, I've still got brown hair because my father died at 92 with mostly black hair, a bit of grey. My mother died at 51 with brown hair. So both, both sides of my genes, and we've got 23 chromosomes from our mother, 23 chromosomes from our father. So both my sides were were not grey. The DNA is a fascinating thing. And if you stretch out the DNA, it can be two metres long, and it's got a huge amount of information in it. If you put all the information that was in the DNA into alphabetical language, put it into paperback books, it would go to the moon and back. I can hardly get my mind around that. It's like an intense library. And this DNA is made up of the food that we eat. The outside strands are made up of polysaccharides. So polysaccharides basically means many sugars. And everything we eat is made up of many sugars. The juice that you're having, you're having liquid food at the moment. It's made up of many sugars. That's the outside strands. The inside bands is made up from amino acids and amino acids is a breakdown from the protein that we eat. And you're getting your protein in your protein drinks. Yesterday, that lovely meal that you'll probably dream about for the next two days. Those um, sunflower burgers with sunflower seeds, a little tofu there's, there's the plant protein there. And they're all glued together by minerals. Minerals literally glues us together. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. And he didn't know what I've just shown you now. 
that our very DNA is made up from the food that we eat. Nothing we do can change the fact, nothing I can do can change the fact that I'm white skinned, blue eyed, brown hair, around five foot two. So it seems like nothing I can do can change the fact that my mother died a cripple in a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis at 51. It seems like a, a, a little step. But though I cannot change the colour of my skin, my height, I can change the genes regarding my health status. Isn't that good news? Because you've probably noticed that I'm not a cripple in a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis and I'm way past 51. I'm so glad that though genetics may load the gun, it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. My mother didn't realise that so many things she was doing was actually feeding her arthritis. Many people are sick through ignorance, not realising that their lifestyle, even actually your um, emotional status, even what we think, definitely what we eat and drink, can turn our genes on or off. So I've been born with inherited genes towards rheumatoid arthritis, but I don't have it. Research in epigenetics shows that lifestyle choices and emotional health can influence gene expression. While genetics may predispose individuals to certain conditions, factors like diet, stress and social environments often determine whether these potential issues manifest. But I have had a sore thumb for a couple of years and I wear a castor compress on it every night and it's happy. And so when they x-rayed my wrist, I said, did you see anything on that thumb? Because it's taking a bit longer to respond, though it is responding. And the doctor said, oh, there's a bit of uh, osteoarthritis there. And I thought, aha, I knew there was something there. And I was so happy. Why was I so happy? because I've just hit 70 and that's all I've got, whereas my mother was a cripple in a wheelchair. Genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. And that study is called epigenetics, the effect of our food, our lifestyle on our genes. We can actually turn those genes on or off by what we're eating and drinking. That's the good news. The phrase genetics load the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger highlights that while genetics set the stage for potential health issues, lifestyle choices ultimately dictate whether they develop. This understanding empowers individuals to make informed decisions about their health. In conclusion, there is a complex interplay between faith, diet, lifestyle and genetics in determining health outcomes. By understanding that every illness has a cause, we empower ourselves to take control of our health. It's crucial to approach health not from a place of fear, but from a position of faith and knowledge, actively participating in our healing processes. Together we can explore the ways to bridge the gap between our genetic makeup and our lifestyle choices, leading to better health for ourselves and future generations. Let us continue this journey of discovery, examining how we can align our lifestyles with principles of health and healing ensuring that we not only understand the true causes of disease but also embrace our power to foster healing within ourselves.